Okay, now, for the purpose of respiration, we have to talk a little bit about how ATP is synthesized. I know in the previous video, I said, oh, ATP is synthesized by just taking ADP and phosphate and just joining it together. But obviously, the process is not as straightforward as that. You see, the ADP and phosphate, if you want to join it together, it needs energy. So if there's no energy, no joining it together. Simple as that. So the first way in which it can be joined together is through a process known as substrate-linked reaction. Now, for the purpose of this, all you just have to understand is, in your cells, you may have some organic molecules, for example, glucose, and look at what happens to the organic molecule. It has been broken down. Now, the catabolism or the breakdown of that organic molecule might release a little bit of energy, and that energy is directly used to join ADP and phosphate together. Okay, so substrate-linked reaction just means using the energy released from another chemical reaction, the phosphate groups and ADP are linked together to form ATP. Okay, so that's the first way in which ATP can be synthesized. Uh, and you must know the definition of substrate-linked reaction. When exactly does this happen? Again, don't worry, we will talk about that later. Okay, now... The second and more important way in which ATP is synthesized is through a process known as chemiosmosis. Now, chemiosmosis, no, it does not involve water molecules, just because the word osmosis is there. Now, what I'm drawing out here is a phospholipid bilayer, and as you can see, there's a weird-looking molecule, and that is actually an enzyme, and it looks a bit like a fan, doesn't it? Like, or like a turbine. Um, and, and that enzyme or protein molecule is actually an ATP synthase. Now, the interesting thing about this enzyme is, what it does is that enzyme can actually rotate. And when that enzyme rotates, the, the turbine-like part, um, it will accept an ADP and phosphate, join the ADP and phosphate together, and release the ATP molecule. So that's what the uh, enzyme is supposed to do. So I'm just going to remind, I'm just going to explain this again. When the ATP synthase molecule rotates, it will accept the ADP and phosphate, joins it together and release the ATP. But the caveat here is the ATP synthase must be able to rotate. So then comes the more important question. What causes the ATP synthase to actually rotate? Well, if you have a fan, what causes it to rotate? Electricity. If you have a windmill, what causes it to rotate? Wind. But if you have ATP synthase, what causes it to rotate? Here's where it becomes a little bit peculiar. It's actually hydrogen ions. What the hydrogen ions need to do is, the hydrogen ions need to diffuse through that hole, that particular hole through the ATP synthase, and the diffusion of hydrogen ions through that ATP synthase will cause it to rotate. And when it causes that to rotate, it will accept ADP phosphate and synthesize ATP molecules. So this ATP synthase can generate ATP, but it can only do so if it's powered by hydrogen ions. So the hydrogen ions have to move from a higher hydrogen ion concentration to a lower hydrogen ion concentration. And actually, this is an example of facilitated diffusion, by the way. So the movement of protons or hydrogen ions, by the way, you can use the word protons or hydrogen ions in the exam. Uh, so the movement of protons or hydrogen ions down the proton gradient through the ATP synthase will generate ATP. So you see, uh, chemiosmosis is actually the main way your cells synthesize ATP, not substrate link reaction. I mean, both can happen, both do happen, but chemiosmosis is the main way the majority of your ATP uh, is synthesized. So then comes the question, where does hydrogen ion come from? You see, remember, respiration is the breakdown of molecules. So when the organic molecule, for example, glucose is broken down, the organic molecule releases some energy, and that, 
the, the slight energy that is released is used to join phosphine and ADP together to make ATP, that is substrate link reaction. But the breakdown of the organic molecule, like glucose, will also release hydrogen atoms. That hydrogen atoms will eventually split to become hydrogen ions, and those hydrogen ions are used to power the ATP synthesis and thus produce ATP. So this is the purpose of respiration. Respiration is to break down the organic molecule so that substrate-linked reaction can happen and also to harness the hydrogen atoms so that the hydrogen atoms can eventually become hydrogen ions and allow chemiosmosis to take place. So this is respiration in a nutshell. Then, of course, comes another very important thing. Okay, I want to talk about this. You see, I'm drawing out the cytoplasm and mitochondrion, and in the mitochondrion over here, that's the matrix, okay, uh, of the mitochondrion. And the mitochondrion, if you remember, it's a double membrane organelle. Uh, let's focus on the inner membrane, which is folded to form those cristae. So you see, the ATP synthesis is actually located in the inner membrane. I'm only drawing out one ATP synthesis, but in reality, there are, you know, more than one in the inner membrane. That's why it's folded, because the more folded it is, the more ATP synthesis it can contain. Again, I'll talk about that later, okay? But the point of the matter here is this. If you have a glucose molecule and you break it down, okay, remember, we wanted to break down the glucose molecule, all right? So when you break it down over here, yes, it releases some energy, which is used to directly join ADP and phosphates together to ATP, substrate link reaction, but it also releases out some hydrogen atoms. Now, those hydrogen atoms are not sentient, which means to say they don't know where to go because the hydrogen atom is now in the cytoplasm. And the ATP synthase, which needs the hydrogen ions eventually, uh, they are in the inner membrane, so they are quite far away. So how does the hydrogen atom find its way into, uh, towards the ATP synthase? This is where the cell needs to enlist the help of carriers. And these carriers are known as hydrogen carriers. And there are two types of hydrogen carriers that we will talk about later, NADs and FADs. Do not worry, we will talk about that in a while. And the function of the carrier is very simple. Okay, they are just molecules, by the way. And the carrier receives the hydrogen. And in chemistry, when something receives hydrogen, they become reduced. Okay, so the carrier will just receive the hydrogen and they will carry it towards the inner membrane of the mitochondrion where they will actually release out the hydrogen, okay, towards the ATP synthase or close to the ATP synthase. And then the hydrogen carrier becomes oxidized because it releases the uh, hydrogen and it, then it just goes back and tries to receive more hydrogen. It's a cycle that happens over here. And when the hydrogen is near the ATP synthase, the hydrogen will eventually become hydrogen ions. Don't worry, we will talk about that later. And then the ATP synthase, because it has hydrogen ions, because it's powered by the hydrogen ions, it can now synthesize ATP. So respiration involves, so what I want you to understand here is the organic molecule, such as glucose, is broken down and some energy released produces ATP through substrate link reaction. No, you cannot put SLR in the exam. You have to put the word substrate link reaction. It also releases hydrogen atoms, which are transported by hydrogen carriers towards the ATP synthesis. So we will talk about all this. So this is why this chapter can be quite difficult because there are a lot of characters involved. You have the glucose molecule, you have the ATP, you have the carriers, and you have the ATP synthesis. But the point of the matter is this. Glucose is broken down. Some energy is used to make ATP through substrate link reaction. But the main purpose of breaking down the glucose is to get the hydrogen use hydrogen carriers to carry the hydrogen towards the ATP synthesis. That's basically what's happening. And that is how we are going to be talking about the next parts of the chapter.
So I hope you understand this. Uh, just a little bit to know about the hydrogen carriers, okay? So the hydrogen carriers are just these molecules known as NADs and FADs. And you do not need to remember the structure of these hydrogen carriers. Do uh, They may show it to you in the exam. They are actually nucleotides, by the way. But again, you do not need to memorize their structures. All you just need to know is NADs and FADs are hydrogen carriers wherein they will just receive the hydrogen atoms uh, during respiration and after that what happens they become reduced okay and when they become reduced what happens then is they will carry the hydrogen eventually to the towards the inner mitochondrial membrane that's it it will then become oxidized because it will release the hydrogen what happens to that NAD? It will then go back wherever it needs to go to accept more hydrogen. It's just a carrier. That's basically it. The difference between NADs and FADs will be talked about in future chapters.